मेरे साथ मौजूद हैं दिलरुक्शी हंदु नेती जो कि कोलंबो से सीधे जुड़ रही हैं मेरे साथ उनसे हम ताजा हालात का पता लेंगे दिलरुक्शी हिंदी ठीक से नहीं बोल पाती हैं लेकिन अंग्रेजी में ही हम उनसे ये बातचीत करेंगे और जानने की कोशिश करेंगे जब मैं उनसे बात कर रही थी मैंने उनसे कहा कि क्या आप मेरे कार्यक्रम में आ सकती हैं तो उन्होंने कहा कि मैं पूरी तरीके से नहीं कह सकती क्योंकि यहाँ बिजली नहीं है बाकी जो बेसिक जो फैसिलिटीज हैं एमिटीज हैं वो भी नहीं लोगों को मिल पा रही हैं। तो इस बात से आप अंदाजा लगाइए कि एक पत्रकार इस बात को लेकर पूरी तरीके से आश्वस्त नहीं है इस हद तक वहां जो बुनियादी समस्याएं हैं वो पूरे तरीके से बुनियादी जो सुविधाएं हैं पूरी तरीके से चरमरा गई आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू लुक एट ऑल द मेजर न्यूज साइट ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड what's happening in sri lanka but trust me uh, you know things are changing so rapidly that just in a matter of couple of hours you know things are really changing tell us what is exactly happening in sri lanka right now with the resignation of the prime minister do you think the anger of the people is going to going to subside do you think people are going to go back to their houses or is it is it wider than that i think it's a, a lot wider than that it's also because it has been brewing for a long long time and uh, we we see it as a manifestation of the protests are seen as something that happened in the past few weeks uh, the manifestation of protests we could see globally only in the past few weeks but uh, the initial protests began way back many many months ago when farmers demanded chemical fertilizer so you know they don't get the kind of traction that uh, other people get in urban centers so the these protests were continuous and and the fact that the poorest of the poor always felt it hard and it's been going on for a long for a number of months but right now sri lanka is quite tense and a lot of things have changed since yesterday and it was quite rapid and for over, uh, for 32 days straight sri lankans have been protesting and this has been this has been one of the big global stories the way in which the protesters have conducted themselves peacefully uh, with uh, due diligence but uh, yesterday under grave provocation uh, they have uh, attacked and they, they the country erupted in violence and it it continues today it, it uh, there are incidents that are being reported even today and there are certain houses there, there are a lot of arson attacks uh, targeting government uh, politicians uh, including several ministers and um, the attorney general has to, uh, called for an um, probe for a probe uh, as to why the violence erupted and what is uh, who provoked these incidents so i think uh, we also need, uh, need to look to the law enforcement uh, authorities right now but the people don't seem to trust because there is always the convergence between politicians and the law enforcement agency so this is uh, this is uh, quite normal and you also know that we have a very populist uh, we had a very populist prime minister until yesterday he commanded a lot of trust and faith among the armed um, forces and he was supported with health and uh, he was uh, staying at the naval uh, uh, the in in the eastern part of sri lanka at the naval air base that's where he, he is supposed to be still and uh, curfew continues till tomorrow so the incidents can continue and uh, it is quite tragic karpa because i think the peaceful protests have given and have provided an idea not just to sri lankans but to the rest of the world i think that you can actually call for change you can you know make sure that you mainstream your political demands without resorting to violence and that you can be successful i would like to just end with one comment and that is uh, that is to say from the 3rd of april to yesterday five rajpakshas have resigned their posts in 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 the family we've had yes uh, starting with his elder brother chama rajpaksha uh, on the 3rd on the 5th our former finance minister basil rajpaksha and then uh, his own son uh, mahindra rajpaksha's own son nama rajpaksha who was the sports minister and also the paddy and uh, you know food technology minister who was shashindra rajpaksha was his nephew so uh, the demand the, the the political demands the young people made did bear some results you know and and it's so tragic that we have reached this stage and we've had to erupt into violence as a nation right. dilokshi now my next question would be did did sri lanka or the world community so they see it coming and now since the prime minister has stepped down do you think the anger is going to subside with his exit what is going to be the way forward because there is hardly any political opposition left in sri lanka now uh, interesting question because uh, initially if you 
call. The anger was directed at the president himself. There's been a great shift and the shift I think is strategic and it was done uh, on purpose. There is, uh, I don't think anyone would doubt the fact that if you take all the Rajapakshas in Sri Lanka, we have quite a few in government, we had quite a few in government and, uh, and also in very you know, important public uh, uh, positions. Uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha was undoubtedly the most popular among them. And he tried to explain things and he did have something similar to a public address and that failed. And the people started calling him, uh, unfortunately, uh, an old miner, a bird, right? So uh, th at that point, we could see that that, uh, that uh, respect, that affection that certain people in Sri Lanka had towards him has changed. Uh, the, the reason I think as to why he was the one to speak out of all the Rajapakshas when there is a president, the prime minister chose to spoke for a reason because he was far more acceptable than any other Rajapaksha to the people. And that backfired. Also, the initial anger, and I think it is still there, it is against President uh, Godabe Rajapaksha. And I think uh, to an extent, Mahindra Rajapaksha became the sacrificial lamb in this instant, because at some point somebody has to give in. And uh, instead of having to impeach the president, which is a difficult process constitutionally to push that. Uh, it is uh, easier to do the kind of cobbling of coalitions, you know, uh, put uh, shaky governments in place and command the mandate in the, command, command the majority in the house by getting two, three parties together. And for that to happen, because people, uh, people clamor for not having a single Rajpaksha in office holding position, particularly cabinet position, what they wanted to do was to uh, remove, remove the prime minister and replace him. With. So I, I think, uh, you know, sending him out was also strategic. But if the president does feel that, you know, it secures his place, I think that is not true because the initial anger was definitely directed towards him. And uh, I go to the protest venue almost every day, if, if it is possible. And I get to talk to a lot of people who are very young and whose aspirations are different. They don't have uh, the memories of the 1983 riots. They haven't lived through it. So they, they don't have that context. They simply see this as absolutely a corrupt government, violent government, and also ineffective government because the people are living without the basics. Right. right, and uh, because of that, also a um, colossal failure in the international, you know, in the international relations, because you don't also have support from other countries. So I think no, I really think uh, mm. the people are going to continue to protest. And from what I know from the protest venue, people are going to continue to protest and demand the resignation of the president. Deluxia, I want to come to you. I was reading this tweet by President uh, Rajapakshe, Gotabaya Rajapakshe. He says, I appeal and urge people to remain calm and stop violence and acts of revenge against citizens, irrespective of political affiliations. All efforts will be made to restore political stability through consensus within constitutional mandate and to resolve economic crisis. I do not see any signs of him resigning or stepping down. Where do you see all of this headed now? Because you only said that, you know, the, the anger of the people was actually originally that was directed towards the president and not towards the, the prime minister, Mahinda Rajpakshe. Where do you see it going now? Do you think there can be a political solution to this economic crisis? I think that there is no way to get, uh, you know, get away from the fact that uh, protesters have been clamoring for the resignation of the president himself. And it's true for the past several weeks, he have been struggling to cobble uh, an alliance within the government and, and uh, may get uh, support from opposition parties and to form an interim administration so that he would be in a, in a position to uh, have a government stable or otherwise for a short period of time where he could continue as the president. And I don't think any political leader can be that imprudent not to see when the writing is really on the wall. And if citizens can see, um, and this is also another problem, Arf, I think these populist leaders do have a problem uh, in identifying when you do see the writing on the wall. You know, sometimes it comes too early, sometimes it, it can take a lot of time. And I, I mean, personally, I've never thought that Mahindra Rajapaksha would leave office in this manner. Because uh, whether people like him or not, he was essentially a powerful 
a popular man and he did a, he had a lot of um, charisma and a lot of appeal and if that can happen i think there are a lot of lessons for all of us in what has happened ye- in uh, yesterday and today and uh, unfortunately it has taken this absolutely terrible uh, violent turn and uh, we are losing property we are losing lives we are losing our sense of peace and stability and if we are looking to get support from the international community uh, a country where there is political um instability and on top of that violence and uh, people you know this kind of clamoring is not going to present a very good case uh but i i don't necessarily see that even if they form uh, an interim administration that it's not going to hold out for a long time uh from what i know it's going to be something that they propose for a, a period of 4 to 6 months with a neutral party to lead uh the government and it's not going to be any of the existing political party leaders who are in parliament and it will be uh, an individual who who has who commands a certain level of respect and uh, support and who's neutral enough and is not in party leadership position um so there are a couple of na- names that have come out um but i don't think that's going to deliver because at the end of the day you've got to keep the public uh supply with the essentials so if you don't come up with an economic solution the political situation is going to only escalate and if you if you um, i really find the foreign policy of this country really flawed and uh, when uh, we started off by saying we will look to asia and how how would you work with asia within asia then you need to work with uh, with countries within the region and uh, probably uh, historically Uh, a pro asia approach has worked during this pandanaka's time for sri lanka it has worked extremely well she has managed to work with each of these powerful nations in the region and get the best out of all those relationships uh, for the country but, but right now in order to go so to speak with the begging bowl to the international community and seek support is going to be very very hard our political instability our lack of numbers in terms of you know holding majority in the house and uh, the chaos that we are witnessing right now in in sri lanka they are all going to compound issues for sri lanka the wire ke aur videos dekhne ke liye subscribe kare aur bell icon par click kare स्वतंत्र पत्रकारिता की आर्थिक मदद करने के लिए डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए लिंक पर जाएं और अपनी राशि चुनें।